pleasure and an honor to be back in Nimes and uh, I would like to uh, thank the organizing committee, especially um, Professor Yong Jin So and uh, Dr. Hyun Jin Lee. Um, so today I'm going to talk about the, um, a, a very brief survey on the uh, um, evolution of hypersurfaces um, and I'll give some examples and uh, towards the end I'll present the uh, results which I got with my collaborators uh, lately. Right, so I'll start with the uh, brief introduction of what's kind of uh, uh, motivation or what's the uh, kind of general idea in the subject. So first of all, um, M is n-dimensional compact smooth Riemannian manifold throughout the talk. And uh, there's a two ways, um, well at least two ways you can um, talk about um, geometric flows. One is you deform the uh, metric which is defined on the manifold and the other one is um, you deform the mapping. Um, for example, like mean capture flow. So, and uh, the speed of uh, a time evolution depends on the curvature of the manifold and depending on the, uh, whether you deform the metric or deform the uh, actual mapping is either intrinsic curvature flow or extrinsic curvature flow. And in this talk, I'm going to talk about extrinsic curvature flow. And um, roughly speaking, curvature is um, order two um, in local coordinates, as we will see to in a later uh, slide, more detail. So, and roughly is um, each flow something like a rich flow um, is roughly, very roughly speaking, is heat equation for a metric. And uh, also for the mean culture flow, for example, it is heat equation for the, uh, um, the position vector, basically. Um, so it's, um, it, roughly speaking, it satisfies the uh, heat equation with uh, other um, lower order terms. So those lower order terms, reaction terms and um, um, diffusion terms, um, you have to control it in order to uh, make us a good estimate for the curvature. So that's the trick and um, that's the kind of what people do when they look at the, uh, this PDE or the, uh, um, this geometric flows. Right. And uh, it, they are basically nonlinear um, parabolic equations. So it brings out the, uh, the resultant theories from the uh, parabolic the theory to uh, say you know, short-term resistance, for example. And um, so here, as I said, um, you will have a short time existence but after that uh, short time you may have a singularity so you can continue until you have a singularity and, but when singularity happens you have to analyze you know, how, it, how they look like and um, depending on the singularity you can do the, some surgery for example and then you know, continue the flow um, and I will describe a bit, bit more about that later okay. and um, as I said well, the main interest and the uh, main kind of uh, um, feature is analysis of singularity. Okay, so well-known examples and the subject first of all, mean capture flow and the curve shortening flow, which is a one-dimensional version of the uh, mean capture flow, and the Gauss capture flow, and the also not so well-known or well kind of a studied one is a scalar capture flow, and that's the which I made a bit of a contribution. Right. So, a very basics of uh, uh, extrinsic geometry. Um, so, say you have a one-parameter family of emotions, um, capital X. So, you can regard that as a position vector in the Rn plus 1. So, starting from the Mn, which also I denote the sigma. So, it's a fix, it's given. And then, this map X send that um, this n-dimension manifold to a uh, um, some hypersurface in my case, so it's immersed in Rn plus 1 and say t is from 0 to some finite time capital T and when I say immersion, obviously that means the differential of this map is uh, um, you know, injective, okay, 1, 1. And uh, what we do here is now, so this is PDE, it's, um, it's got n plus 1 you know, component, so it's a system of PDEs and on this you know, portion vector so dx by dt equals minus plus minus of some speed f times nu. So nu is the uh, normal vector. So it's normal vector to the uh, hypersurface. So it's a uh, well-defined. And um, if you have uh, some convex hypersurface, it's a uh, uh, basic Gauss map, for example. And uh, usually this speed f is, we take positive. Um, so if you got a plus f uh, times nu, that it means that so f is positive, so it's an expanding flow, basically it expands. If, if you take the minus sign, obviously it basically just you know, contracts, it shrinks, basically. And then while it's shrinking, uh, 
you may have some singularity. It depends on the, uh, which initial condition you have. Okay? So what we do here is uh, well, study the evolution of the uh, hypersurface and uh, um, study the uh, limit behavior when, when you have the, uh, um, some good convergence. Okay, right. Um, so basic notations, the first of all, um, metric is given by um, dx by dxi. So just in you know, a one tangent uh, vector um, in a product. So this is pointy square bracket is uh, standard in a product in Euclidean space. And with uh, another uh, tangent vector dx by dxj. And the second final form is basically the, uh, taking the uh, tangent vector with the uh, derivative of the normal vector. Again, using the uh, integration by part, because um, normal vector and tangent vector they're kind of uh, perpendicular to each other, so you can basically move the uh, this uh, derivative to the uh, the first one. So you basically differentiate twice and take the uh, normal vector, and obviously with the minus sign. So small x one to the small x n. That's the local coordinate of this hypersurface. And um, when you got to map, um, is given by the taking the uh, indices up by um, this inverse. Um, metric on the second fundamental form, and because this is a symmetric matrix, you will have uh, eigenvalues uh, lambda one to lambda n, which we call the uh, principal curvatures. And uh, with this principal curvatures, you can define the uh, elementary symmetric function. So, case um, elementary symmetric function is you choose um, um, k out of um, n eigenvalues and uh, take the all the sum of the possible combinations. So that's the uh, what this is. So you basically take the k of them and multiply by together, and you basically run through all the indices from one to n. So that's that's that. But, so examples of this is first of all mean culture flow. You basically take the uh, uh, sigma one, which is essentially just trace of the uh, this um, Vengelton map. So only take the uh, k equals one here, and k equals n. Then you got only one possibility, <coughs> which is taking the all this um, product of eigenvalues which is Gauss curvature, and scalar curvature is you basically take the two of them out of n. So you basically take the, uh, um, when i and j is a different, and then take the uh, product of those two. And the technical uh, um, notation is uh, this a square, meaning the uh, sum of the uh, squares of each eigenvalues. So general form of the, uh, this parabolic flow in the extrinsic uh, sense is uh, you can write in this format. So dx by dt minus f, some speed f depending on the uh, first of all the Weingart map and the normal to the hypersurface in the normal direction. So that's the kind of how the uh, this extensive culture usually look like. Um, so first of all the uh, um, the mean culture flow, which has been studied extensively for many years um, since the uh, I believe is uh, in the 60s, um, Brackett kind of introduced the. Uh, um, tangent flows in mean culture flow. Um, so names are um, Andrews, Colding, um, Ecker, Hamilton, Huskin, uh, Minakotsi, Wang, and many people. Um, there are tons of people studying in this subject. So the equation looking like dx by dt equals minus h nu. So h here is a mean curvature. And uh, the other example would be a gas culture flow. Um, and there's a kind of a overlapping names here again, uh, Ben Andrews, Chow, um, and Daskal Polis, and the Fury, and one of my collaborators, Guillaume Lee, in Seoul National University. So the equation looked like um, dx by dt equals minus k to the, I put this exponent alpha. People just study in very kind of a relatively simple case when this exponent alpha is either one or um, one over n. Um, in order to make the uh, degree of the uh, this speed either equals one or the n, that's the kind of uh, the first kind of a uh, trial by the uh, many people. But people kind of uh, exhausted all the possible kind of exponent alpha now, um, and I'll come back to this a bit more later as well. So now I'm going to talk about the uh, recent result in mean culture flow. So like a rich flow surgery, like um, Hamilton introduced. You can do the uh, surgeries on mean culture flow as well. So um, that's done by um, Huiskin and Sinestrati um, in 2009. And uh, y what you do is, first of all, you introduce the uh, extrinsic culture next, which is analogous to your uh, intrinsic um, culture next. Um, so when you say culture next, that means that you have a regions 
with the extrinsic curvature looking like the curvature of center cylinder. Basically, um, you have um, curvature, basically when you got to map of this curvature neck looking like the uh, uh, when you got to map for the standard cylinder, you have basically epsilon kind of closed, and that means the uh, basically the uh, extrinsic curvature neck. And what you and after that, you introduce the uh, geometric curve, uh, geometric neck. Um, when you say geometric, that means that you consider the uh, the metric. Okay, so you have a uh, regions of this uh, neck. Um, you will have a uh, um, metric which I kind of described before, which is the um, inner product of two. Um, tangent vector is looking like the uh, metric on the uh, um, cylinder, standard cylinder in standard you know, frame, and they're kind of epsilon close. So that's the geometry name. So these two uh, notions may look different, but what they did was basically they showed it's essentially the same, or more precisely. If you have a large enough curvature neck, that will take the uh, um, a geometry neck basically. Uh, you can have a cylindrical uh, parameterization. And you need very careful um, choice of the parameters, which indicate the um, thickness of neck and also length of the neck. And that's a very crucial bit. Okay? And uh, so, with uh, these parameters uh, carefully chosen, and you can do the uh, surgery with a curvature control. So the key point wh why you're doing this kind of surgery is that um, you, in each kind of step when you do surgery, you have to, you have to be uh, uh, very careful with whether you can carry on with the uh, control with the uh, curvature estimate. Okay? So when you can kind of uh, track down all this in a curvature estimate when you do the, uh, each surgery, then you can keep doing the surgery, basically. But also the other point is that you cannot do the surgery infinite many of times, and then you know you may not be able to track down all the um, topologies and geometry. But if you can do finite number of times, like uh, and Grisha Perlman did for the rich flow, then um, you can actually you ha well you have a good chance of uh, tracking down the, all these changes of the uh, the topology and the um, the geometry. So so for example. I'll just draw the a few pictures. Um, so if you have, uh, say, I'm, I'm talking about mean culture flow here, okay? And uh, if you have a very kind of simple things like a sphere and like a rich flow, that will basically contract, okay? And uh, eventually it will go to just a point, and we say it's converges to a round point, okay? And if you have something like a blob, like this, um, well, it looks so called a dumbbell shape. There's um, three possibilities. So first of all, if you have uh, this neck, so-called, is uh, quite thick and quite short, then this may not kind of contract initially. It may come out basically. Okay, so it, it may look like this. Sorry, that is it getting smaller? <laughs> smaller. Looking like almost like an ellipsoid, and then it may look like and converges to points. That's one possibility. The other possibility is um, if you have this neck is very thin, okay, it might get uh, very thin and uh, getting long right? and then getting really thin and long and uh, it may just break off okay into two pieces okay and it's too big it had to get smaller and smaller might have uh, two pieces Right, that's the second possibility. And the third possibility is if the uh, um, left-hand side is bigger than right-hand side, for example, then it may look like this. And this may go get smaller. This side gets smaller as well. 
and but when this right hand side contract that may give a very kind of a pointy kind of end so like that and if you magnify the uh, this point a bit okay magnify that what well, basically doing the uh, parabolic rescaling basically um, magnify that and write um, rescaling constant and um, that may look like this so here you got this is a sphere bit m minus one bit um, and then you know this may go to very kind of a um, end bit looking like a cylinder basically right here you got something very round but you have an infinite long kind of a cylinder basically this something like a so-called um, Brian soliton or the uh, Sigar soliton like Hamilton introduced so you have this kind of uh, possibilities um, and if you have this kind of nice convergence like it converges to um, um, the point that's fine that's what we want but if you have this kind of uh, singularities um, we want to make sure that actually uh, you know this is not good so what we do is that uh, we're doing a, a surgery so one of the surgery um, is basically attaching the handle body okay so for example if I had uh, the second example when this neck kind of uh, is given very long thin neck what you do is you basically cut this neck which will break off basically and if you just gonna cut it too near to the uh, end of cylinder then the curvature difference is for example here there's a curvature kind of uh, being very small in this way but certainly it kind of increases so we want to make sure that it is away from the end of the cylinder a bit okay so just starting from roughly about here you just basically cut this bit okay and uh, so here the uh, cross-section some small things um, in this if I talking about R3 here right this is the uh, um, hypersurface so this two-dimensional surface and this would be uh, just S1 but if I go to say you know Rn plus 1 then that will be M minus 1 right so this is M minus 1 sphere so what you do you basically cut it and um, you have a two pieces like that and like that now and uh, what you do is basically you put the uh, just solid cap here a uh, spherical cap okay so you put the uh, um, you know if you got uh, um, R plus one you put basically BN okay um, yeah so if you do this then now what we have here is uh, um, two round bits um, which is basically topological sphere basically right and this is uh, we don't have any more this kind of neck anymore so basically you continue the uh, uh, main culture flow on each piece okay you think that um, so if you do this then you may have uh, another singularity later okay or this may go to just uh, round just sphere then it's fine we stop there okay but if it's um, occurring another kind of a neck pinching so-called again then you do the surgery but if you do the, uh, the finite number of times in a very controlled way then you know then you're fine so that's what these um, two people um, Huskin and Sinan Serrati did in uh, 2009 like um, Richard Hamilton and uh, Richard Pellman did for Rich Flow although there's any formal link or formal kind of formulation between the uh, main culture flow and the rich flow um, people still haven't found a really good kind of a link between those two they do share their very same kind well similar techniques for example and similar analysis um, and that's my physicist looking at the renormalization flow uh, which might kind of uh, actually connect these two but still that more to be done in the sense so the who's getting the sinister result is first of all you have uh, um, initial kind of immersion which is close n dimensional hypersurface with the n greater than or equal to three then if you have an uh, initial surface too convex meaning that two smallest eigenvalue is positive or just greater than zero on the uh, initial manifold then 
um, the existing culture flow with the surgeries, starting from this initial manifold, and um, which terminated after finite number of times. Okay, so that was the big result, and they got two corollaries, which is saying that um, basically at the end is either uh, a sphere or the finite connected sum of the uh, sorry, this has to be s n minus one times s one, so torus basically. Okay, so I so either sphere or the, the sum of torus. This is what they got. Um, and later bits basically saying that you know you have a, this handle body you can attach and uh, the this initially that would kind of satisfy the initial kind of manifold um, and uh, you have uh, basically a different morphism from the initial surface to the uh, this end result so this is what they've shown okay and uh, very recently um, about few three weeks ago um, who is and and uh, Simon Brandel also solved it for n equals two case. So they they did for, um, n or greater than equal to three earlier, and then relatively recently they did for the uh, um, dimension two as well. So this is another corollary from the other uh, theorem saying that if you have a closed, simply connected n-dimensional two convex embedded surface, um, deform, and then that is deformed to either sphere and um, also bounds the uh, some region which kind of uh, looking like the uh, embedded n, n plus one dimensional standard closed ball, okay? It's, it kind of follows from the domain result. And as I mentioned, they don't for the, uh, um, this dimension two as well, n equals two case basically, right? Um, positive mean curvature meaning uh, n equals two is same as obviously uh, two convex because you have only lambda one and lambda two. Okay, so that's what they done. Um, so this is the, was the sort of one, well, probably the, one of the biggest results in the last few years. And um, Tobias Calding and uh, Minikotzi also they show that a generic mean culture flow, um, you know, essentially you will have uh, uh, the singularity will be looking like a spherical or the cylindrical. Or this, and the, what, what they mean by generic, meaning that um, it's likely not to have this kind of neck pinching and uh, whenever this kind of neck pinching happens you can perturb them away so that's they call the generic mean culture flow and they put that um, article in the archive about two years ago and I guess that will be published quite soon or I might have a published already I think. So, um, so I briefly mentioned about um, this mean culture flow. Now I'm going to uh, just give the uh, what's kind of latest result in the Gauss culture flow. So Gauss culture flow is um, acting quite differently from the mean culture flow. First of all, um, with the mean culture flow, essentially the, the speed of time evolution is um, homogeneous degree one in the sense that um, it's the sum of the uh, uh, principal curvature, right? It's a degree one uh, with respect to the uh, this um, eigenvalues. Whereas in the uh, gas culture flow, if you put in the um, um, alpha exponent, then it, gas culture itself is homogeneous degree n, first of all. And if you put in the alpha there, is um, alpha times n. Okay, so that's the speed of the uh, this evolution. And the statement goes basically, um, it converges to a point, basically. That's what they did. If you starting from the uh, uh, compact, and connected, sorry, so it has to be connected here, uh, strictly convex smooth manifold, that's the initial manifold, okay? Then what you have is, um, you know, there's a finite time blow up, um, and the, towards the, the finite time blow up, um, they, it will converge nicely to a point, basically. So that's what they've shown. And um, if you rescale the, uh, um, this hypersurface nicely so that it preserves the uh, volume, okay? Then once you have that, and the rescaled, the hypersurface will have this uh, minimum principal curvature and the maximum um, uh, the, uh, principal curvature will be comparable and uh, that's uniformly bounded below and uniformly bounded above. So it's basically looking like a sphere, basically, essentially. So it's, it's got the uh, lower bound and the upper bound and uniform bound, basically. That's what they've shown. And this is the latest result regarding the uh, uh, gas culture flow. So this was obtained by uh, my collaborators, Akiyam Lee and uh, Lamy Kim in 2013. And uh, I'll probably uh, give the, uh, the result which we got, um, sorry. So, right, so what we've done was the, um, 
generalization of the uh, scalar curvature flow, uh, which was done by Bennett Chow in the 80s. So what he studied was um, he had a compact connected strictly convex hypersurface um, and uh, initially pinched, meaning that the second fundamental form HIJ is bounded below by um, some small epsilon times um, mean curvature flow, oh, sorry, mean curvature H times uh, metric GIJ. You have this initially, then you have this um, initial condition preserved towards the uh, um, towards the uh, blob time under this flow, which is dx by dt equals minus scalar curvature uh, to the power half. The reason they put half is the uh, scalar curvature is homogeneous, homogeneous degree two in a principal curvature um, lambda i's. Okay, so if you put in the the power half, that becomes the homogeneous degree one. If you have a homogeneous degree one, you can do the uh, pinching estimate. Basically, that's developed by um, Ben Andrews. Um, is using the uh, maximum principle for tensors. Um, when you do the uh, pinching estimate for the um, for tensors, you do exactly the same as the uh, um, you know for scalar case and. Only difference is that you have very nasty terms towards the end. So what you do is uh, you have this low order terms, basically zero order term towards the end. You assume that at minimum point they, they are all positive. Then you basically kill that form off and you will get the, uh, um, the required um, maximum principle for tensors. That's what they've done. Um, basically that's what Hamilton kind of developed in the um, 80s, I believe. Um, and the Ben Andrews kind of made kind of you know, for the uh, um, this extrinsic culture case, okay. But key point was there has to be homogeneous degree one. So if you don't have a homogeneous degree one, then it is really hard to get pinching estimate. If you don't have a pinching estimate, then you know uh, it, it's really hard to control or the estimate the curvature. So you have to do um, case by case if you don't have it. So and what we've done was. How about if you're just putting some sort of perturbation term in front of the scalar curvature? So I put the, um, there's some positive smooth function psi, depending on the uh, this capital X. So this has to be psi there, and I called it um, an isotropic scalar curvature flow. Okay. So with uh, my collaborators um, Guillaume Lee and uh, Lamy Kim and SNU, uh, what we've done was, um, if you have um, initial condition looking like this, second fundamental form is um, bounded below by this. Difference between from the uh, um, the previous case is that we have this some constant c depending on the uh, uh, psi and uh, dimension const constant n and epsilon as well. And if you have this in initially, and c depends on the also the derivative, first derivative and second derivative of the psi and the initial data. And if you consider this evolution equation given by this, basically dx by dt equals minus psi times r to the half, sorry, that has to be new there, so normal vector is, is there, then you have a final blow of uh, basically smooth unique solutions to this PDE. And uh, also, if you rescale it um, properly, then uh, the limiting shape would be sphere, basically. Okay? So if it, the uh, next result. So, if you basically do um, typical parabolic rescaling, this is the just typical parabolic rescaling. So, you you got the uh, um, tau is new time parameter, x tilde is new position vector. So, it has to be square root of two times capital T minus small t. Then, rescale the equation would be this. If you have this, and you will have essentially the uh, limiting shape would be um, the round sphere. If you assume that that this psi the perturbation. Um, the factor has a local minimum at that um, the blow point on the, for the uh, um, on rescale flow, okay. And also you have a limiting kind of behaviors explained by this as well. So this is our kind of a contribution to this topic. So um, well, I think it is the right time to stop. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>